In the year of 1924, when Alfred Wegener proposed his study about this continental drift, although he presented a lot of he evidences his idea that the continents were once joined together was not easily accepted and satisfied the scientific society. Years have passed. Continental drift theory was still left blurry of the questions as to how the drifting took place. Do you have any idea how? In the early 1960s, this said theory was supported by another theory called the seafloor spreading. This was the fruit of the study at the scientist Harry Hess, together with Robert Jets. So let's take a look at this. This is the little model of the seafloor spreading. These colored stripes denote the magnetic anomaly of the rocks. Brown is the positive charge and yellow is the opposite or negative charge. Formation of reef valleys and oceanic ridges are indications that the crust is spreading or splitting apart. When we say oceanic ridges or mid-ocean ridge, it is an area in the middle of the ocean where a new ocean floor is formed when lava erupts through the cracks in the Earth's crust. In this case, the plates are forming divergent plate boundaries wherein they tend to move apart. Most divergent boundaries are situated along underwater mountain ranges, called oceanic ridges. As I said earlier, as the plates separate, new materials from the mantle oozes up to fill the gap. These materials, the magma will slowly cool to produce new ocean floor. So let's have a clearer look. Suppose that this is the actual crust. According to this, Seafloor spreading theory, hot, less dense material from below Earth's crust rises towards the surface at mid-ocean ridge. This material flows sideways, carrying the seafloor away from the ridge, and creates a crack in the crust. The magma flows out of the crack, cools down, and becomes the new seafloor. Here in the place where two oceanic plates collide, or where an oceanic plate and a continental plate collide, a subduction zone occurs. As the, as the new seafloor is formed at the mid-ocean ridge, the old seafloor farthest from the ridge destroyed at the subduction zone. This is the subduction zone, where the destruction of old seafloor is happening. From this diagram, it is clear that this event gives rise to the formation of a volcanic arc near the edge of a continental leading plate. The reason for this is because the denser oceanic crust undergoes what we call subduction process or bending of the crust towards the mantle. Since the mantle is hotter than the crust, the tendency is the subducted crust melt forming magma. Addition of volatile material such as water causes the magma to become less dense. Therefore, allowing it to rise and reach the crust once again and causing volcanic activities on the continental leading plate for the oceanic crust, one important geologic feature is formed and that is the trench. So it is not always that the molten materials at subducted seafloor were going back to the ridges to fill the gap, but also to rise up here at the other side that causes the formation of volcanoes. Seafloor sea spreading was strengthened with the discovery that the magnetic rocks near ridge to follow a pattern aside from the fact that rocks near ridge are unmarkably younger than, the, than those farther from the ridge. As this crystallize, the minerals behave like tiny compasses and align directly to the Earth's magnetic field. So when magnetic reversal occurs, there is also change in the polarity of rocks. This allowed us to visualize the magnetic stripes in the ocean floor similar to this model and to construct a magnetic polarity time scale. New rocks are added to the ocean floor at ridge with approximately equal amounts on both sides of the oceanic ridge. I know now you were thinking of how does magnetic reversal happen and how does it prove the seafloor spreading. Let's just don't go any further. Magnetic reversal is called the flip of the earth. 
it happens when the North Pole is transferred into South Pole and vice versa. This is due to the change in the direction of flow on the outer core. The occurrence of magnetic reversals can, can be explained through the magnetic patterns in the magnetic rocks, especially those found in the ocean floor when lava solidifies, iron-bearing minerals crystallize. The stripes on hot sides are of equal size and polarity, which seem to mirror images across the ocean ridge. And do you know what does this indicate? It indicates that indeed, the seafloor is spreading. Over time, the new oceanic crust pushed the old oceanic crust far from the ridge. The process of seafloor spreading allowed the creation of new bodies of water. Because the rate of formation of a new seafloor is not always as fast as the destruction of the old seafloor at the subduction zone. This explains why the Pacific Ocean is getting smaller and why the Atlantic Ocean is getting wider. If the subduction is faster than seafloor spreading, the ocean shrinks. When the seafloor spreading is greater than the subduction, then ocean gets wider. Just like when the Red Sea was created when the African plate and the Arabian plate moved away from each other. Seafloor spreading is also pulling the continents of Australia, South America, and Antarctica away from each other in the East Pacific. The East Pacific rose is one of the most active sites of seafloor spreading with every 14 cm per year. So maybe million years from now, the broken continents will join together again. This Pangea will be at last back, and history repeats itself.